So, unless you're going to give all that away, and we'll keep whatever you tore up here. Yes. Hey everybody, welcome to Greenhorn Barbecue and Beer. I'm Todd and Deborah, and uh, we're going to make some delicious Central Texas style pork spare ribs, a few St. Louis ribs thrown in for good measure. So we're gonna fire up the Yoder Wichita loaded smoker that we picked up a couple months ago from uh, barbecue headquarters in Simi Valley. Today we're using white oak, also known as post oak. You can use any kind of wood you want. But uh, we're going for Central Texas style here, so be sure to clean the pork away from your sink, somewhere where uh, the blood and the splash doesn't contaminate anything that you don't want getting it on. So I did it outside and uh, stuff that I could readily wash off with the garden hose. Here I am patting it dry, and most of the membranes were already off because we bought these at Costco. There were a couple that still had it on. Be sure to take those things off. I'm putting salt, pepper, garlic on them nothing else and for a spritz I'm using 50-50 water and apple cider vinegar mix uh, we'll spritz those things once the bark is set up on the smoker uh, probably within an hour to an hour and a half into the cook I ended up running out of uh, pepper by the time I was uh, rubbing the last rib that ended up on the Weber to, so we used a steak seasoning so I was able to shoehorn 10 racks of these delicious ribs on the yoder. Uh, it was nice and cozy in there. And again, I was aiming for 250 degrees. Uh, and uh, I was able to achieve that, but I did get some temperature spikes. Um, I had five overflow and four needed to go on the Traeger. That's all I wanted to put there. And then I used the Weber 22 Performer for my last one, which was a St. Louis cut. I used some Kingsford charcoal. All right, just to catch you guys up where we're at. Uh, got the Yoder here, huffing away between 250 and 300. I'm um, just rotating the meat here, like a lot of other places do. Uh, just rotated them. Um, I got a combination of uh, baby backs, St. Louis cut. Uh, St. Louis cut got a little burned ends here, a little bit mainly from being over here on the right side of the cooker. So I just rotated them after about an hour and a half. Um, again, I'm running salt and pepper, garlic, SPG, nothing else. Um, gonna let them cook probably another hour and a half or until it get a nice color. Um, started out with uh, white oak and uh, to get the uh, cooker going up to temperature, first hour, and now I'm switching to pecan and uh, for whatever it's worth get a little mix and uh, I have some mesquite but I decided not to do that uh, with the ribs is tender so I didn't have enough room on the odor for all the ribs I bought and I, I bought too many so I got one of my st. Louis ribs on the, uh, the Weber here I'm using a slow and sear SNS with a little bit of water and uh, I just pulled it off, but it's been right about 250, 260. Uh, it's keeping really nice even temperature. And they got the Traeger over here. And I'm running mesquite pellets. It doesn't deliver a whole lot of smoke anyway. It's more like an outdoor oven with a little bit of smoke. But uh, got the tell true huffing away up here by the stack, just to about 260. I have it set for 250, but as you can see, it kind of kind of alternates between 250 and 260. Like it heats up, shuts off, heats up, shuts off. We got a mixture, a couple baby backs, and a couple St. Louis cuts in there. But seen a much more even cook on the Traeger. Um, it's not as fast, um, basically because I'm the lower temperature of the smoker. But I think I'm actually going to pick it up a notch to 275. And I'm going to go a little bit warmer on the Weber too, to kind of catch up to that yoder. I know I'm going to be wrapping a lot sooner on that yoder, and I'd like to wrap all these about the same time. So I'm definitely going to have a bit of a taste comparison going on here. Uh, 
And uh, I threw, for good measure, a few chunks of hickory in with this charcoal on the Weber. Um, kind of spaced them out. So it's getting just a lick of smoke probably about every half hour or so. Um, mainly at the beginning. And uh, I don't have as much pepper on this one. Uh, ran out of coarse pepper, believe it or not. Uh, so I use more of a salt and more of this premix uh, stuff that I have, but it just doesn't have that dark uh, crust color yet. So anyway, there we are, and uh, we'll get back to you soon. So I think I'm running probably a little too smoky um, on the stack here. Keep playing with it, um, preheating my logs and, uh, and the temperature, but uh, it's kind of hit and miss, you know. But uh, I think it's doing all right for the most part. I'm definitely going to wrap these things just to keep the smoke from getting to them here in a little while. So in case you guys are wondering, I'm, I'm doing my best to uh, copy a Central Texas style uh, in doing these ribs. SPG, uh, I'm not going to mop them down really. I'm just going to use a 50-50 water apple cider vinegar mix. And I'm going to wrap them with a little bit of that uh, spritz in there as well and finish them off until they're uh, nice and tender and they, the, uh, the bone uh, kind of twists and pulls out. So uh, anyway, uh, it's the first time that I've tried this Central Texas style. I really liked it a lot when I was down in El Paso last month at Desert Oak Barbecue. So I'm going to give it a shot. So they've been cooking for about three hours. And... Uh, they got a lot of smoke off and on uh, this side of the cooker has been getting really hot so I've rotated them once um, of course I got a st. Louis and some baby back uh, some more st. Louis here um, so a few of them are pulling away they're getting cooked a little quicker than I wanted to so I'm just gonna check the tenderness doesn't quite got that droop that I want that one does. So that one I'm going to wrap. I'm going to pull off that bone. And this one I'm just going to leave in there. Okay, so that one, as you can see, starting to split a little bit. It's got a nice droop. Put that in there for a little bit longer. That one's not quite there yet. Yeah, that one's got a nice droop. Sorry, that one I'm going to rub. Sorry, that one I'm going to wrap. Not quite there yet. I'm going to leave that in there. That one's got a nice droop. Not quite there. These two back here, St. Louis style. Starting to get that root, but don't quite have that pullback. That one's no root. So I'm actually going to bring that one forward. One back. Alright. So I'm going to wrap these two. One more. So that one, I'm just going to pull out the bone. Now, yeah, see? Comes right on out. I'm gonna spritz these up before I wrap them. And I'm just gonna be really careful. I'm gonna check these. I'm gonna check them. Probably about every hour. Okay, there's a little bone right there. I'll just pull that out. Oh, pit master privilege. Mm. Oh, that's Texas style right there. A little bit of spritz. Wrap it up. Again, I'm being really careful not to puncture this foil. 
I didn't buy enough. I like that droop, and that's why I'm wrapping these. Typically, you want to use a double wrap of foil to avoid any punctures. But if you trust yourself, just go slow. Be really careful. I'm using heavy duty foil for barbecuing. That's no guarantee you're going to not puncture the foil. So it's just really important to know your rib, know where that bone is. I'm going to wrap one more. I'm going to wrap them all. Okay, so I've wrapped them all up, um, spritzed them just before I wrapped them, and I went meat side down, spritzing both sides, and I uh, tight, I uh, wrapped them up nice and tight, and you want to avoid any steaming, any room in there for, uh, you know, steam to get around, and also make sure it's meat side down. Watch for any bones that might poke through the foil. If that happens, uh, well, get a second piece of foil. Or cross your fingers so at this point the smoker is really just an oven uh, you could use any kind of wood at this point uh, you know pecan hickory mesquite oak you know whatever the cheapest is that you have um, uh, you know we got it wrapped since we have it wrapped uh, you know it really doesn't matter so I'm just still gonna tend the fire it's good practice at this point um, Really haven't been running too much on the Yoder as far as the, uh, the hole. Just a little bit of crack. Um, sometimes I go a little bit more closed than that. Rarely any further open. If I want it more open, I'll just open the door. And there's a nice little shot in there. I do have the... Uh, next uh, on deck log off to the side so if there was a competition for smokers about which one puts out the best aroma and smell hands down i think pellet grills would take the cake on that one i'm running mesquite on my trigger right now and the combustion process is just so efficient and so even that you you smell every bit of that mesquite and the food that you're cooking at the same time it's just a wonderful smell really adds to the uh, atmosphere and also gives you one hell of a evenly cooked piece of meat. Um, my Yoder stick burner is definitely good as well. Requires a little bit more work, um, a little more education on fire management, which uh, you know, I'm still working on. But uh, you know, someday I hope to uh, get such a clean smoke as uh, compared to the uh, Traeger here. So anyway, like I said, uh, fire management and coal is so... Oh, you're back? Yeah. What you got, Hi, baby? I got you some of your favorite beer. All right. What it is it? cold. What do we got here? Oh, Belching Beaver. Peanut butter snarl. My favorite. Ugh. All right. It. Enjoy. All right. So, uh, definitely like a cool beverage on a day like today. Happy Easter, everybody. And uh, cheers. Okay, so these things have been uh, cooking now for over six hours, and uh, I'm going to unwrap a couple of these, take a peek at it. All right, that looks really good. That's almost, yeah, that's falling apart. So I'm going to let these sit a little bit, kind of get firm back up. Oh yeah. All right, look at that. 
That one's got a nice bark. It's got a good pull away of the meat from the bone. Nice uh, salt, pepper, garlic bark there. I'm gonna let this set up, kind of get firm. Okay, so we got uh, three different ribs here. Um, the one right here is a St. Louis cut. It was oddball out as far as it only was cooked on the Weber with charcoal, a little bit of hickory chunks, offset about 250 to 275. Um, got a good six hours on there total, um, probably uh, three hours with smoke, and then we wrapped it. Um, mostly salt, garlic, pepper, not so much pepper though, I ran out, okay. but uh, uh, came out not bad. Had, it's got good pullback from the meat, but it's kind of thin. It's a thin piece of meat. Um, this one right here, mostly salt, pepper, garlic. Uh, and this one was done on the Traeger with a mesquite pellet. Um, these were all spritzed with a 50-50 uh, water apple cider vinegar solution. Um, and this one was done pretty reliably, uh, probably a little bit too long, uh, at about 250. And uh, at times I went up to 275. Um, and then this one uh, was on the Yoder uh, with mostly white oak and uh, the same salt, pepper, garlic treatment and uh, spritzing. We wrapped them all about the same time and uh, they were wrapped maybe uh, three hours and uh, probably a little bit too long. I had a wood delivery and it got away from me, but uh, I think it came out all right. So we're gonna test these here. Oh, look at that, that just fell apart. So I know they're not supposed to fall apart like that, so they're probably too well done. And that bone just comes out. So there's the uh, the yoder. Makes no difference. All right, it's falling apart. Definitely got that Central Texas uh, salt, pepper, garlic, SPG taste. It's got a nice uh, smoke ring to it. Definitely got that pepper taste. Mm. Definitely taste the smoke. Yeah, got heavy on the smoke. That's mainly my uh, fire management on the odor. Now we're going to go check out the Traeger one. This one's holding together much better. Doesn't tend to fall apart. There we go. Looks like it's uh, holding together a little bit better. Got a really nice bar. Nice little smoke ring. Take a bite of this. Mmm. Mmm. Well, that tastes really good. Much less on the smoke, much more flavor. Mm. Yeah, on the pellet grills, it's really hard to over smoke on a pellet grill. Um, you can really taste that seasoning, but it doesn't uh, overpower. You still taste the meat. Mm. I give that one. And my lovely assistant is going to. Take a piece. Mm, I'm gonna have another. Mm, that's mm. really good. Mm. I like these the best. That's really good. All right, not bad. Okay, now we're gonna try the uh, St. Louis style. It was done on the uh, Weber. Maybe if I flip these over, it's easier to cut. All right, again, this, this one was done on the Weber with uh, charcoal, Kingsford blue, a few chunks of hickory, offset, about 250, sometimes 270. Got good smoke ring. 
nice color. Pretty decent bark. Didn't have as much pepper as the other two as I ran out. But I was, I was still able to get a lot of, a lot of pepper in there. Nice one taste. Mm. Alright. <clears throat> more moist. You can definitely taste, taste the pork more on this one. We got more of that pork flavor. Um, the salt and pepper on the first two kind of did the uh, pork flavor a little bit. Whereas this one went down with salt and pepper and the uh, flavor of the meat really uh, comes through a little more. Still got the smoke, but since I only used a few chunks, it's not overpowering. I didn't get hints, hints of garlic in there, just ever so slightly. Pulls away from the bone really well. Use a nice sheen on the bone. Mm. Oh, yeah. I have one piece of the cook on my And the reason I pulled out the Weber is because I ran out of room on the odor. I put four of them on the trigger. I still had one I had to find a home for. So, Weber Kettle the Rescue. Mm. Just came out really good. All right, so there we go. So, if my fire management gets better, let's say I'm really close to getting the odor on a much tastier rib than the trigger. Traeger has it for just evenness of, of the smoke flavor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have to say the Traeger is the winner of this uh, category. Traeger winner, baby!